Coding is the skill of the future. Learning to code is the best financial decision you can make. Coding is the best side hustle. We've all heard some sort of variation to these phrases telling us about coding and how it can turn our life around miraculously while requiring minimal effort and make us a ton of money. So I decided to test it. This is the first video of many to come about my journey to becoming a self-taught full stack dev and testing available resources. Today, it's all about Codecademy. Having one best education startup at Crunch Award in 2012, the Skillies Technology Award in 2015, Codecademy offers free coding classes in 12 different programming languages and is available worldwide. But how good is it really? So let me tell you about my experience with it. I did the Learn Python 2 course because the Python 3 course is only available for the pro version. More on that later. After finishing that, I did the Python for Programmers, which is their intermediate Python course. Also for Python, I did the Connect 4 project. Then I did the Learn Raspberry Pi. And finally, I did learn JavaScript. Completed all of those in the free version, got 100% on all of them. So I think I can definitely judge Codecademy from a somewhat experienced standpoint, but also, you have to take into consideration that I'm not yet a full-fledged developer. Rather, this is more about my experience trying to get there. So let's start with the pros. First and foremost, it's free. Well, kind of. They have a large variety of courses available for free, but not everything there is free. The content you do get, however, is overall good. It was super easy to understand everything thrown at me, and it had good exercises and projects to go along with it so that you could practice uh, as you were learning which is how you're supposed to learn coding because taking notes isn't really going to help you anywhere near as much as if you're coding alongside your learning so that you can put it into practice. So that was really, really good. I also noticed that all the coding and everything you need to get started is like held within your browser. So you don't even have to worry about downloading anything at all. And although in the long run, it is obviously better to have your own code editor for like more customizability and features. I think I think this is definitely makes it a lot more beginner friendly, easy to just try out without having to worry about anything else. I'm not gonna lie, I really did like this because I feel like when you're first starting out something, the least amount of barriers you put in front of yourself, the better. It, this kind of just goes with anything, doubting yourself the most, you don't know if you're gonna like it or not, etc, etc, etc. Having just something that you can try out just like that without even having to worry about downloading anything. I would. Say Say it's definitely a pro. I'm editing the video now and I wanted to add that for the pros, I felt like they did a really good job at like gamifying the experience, the whole coding experience, you know, having the streaks and having the achievements there. It really gives you that nice little dopamine rush you need every now and then um, to keep you going. So I remember when I first started, I kept the streak for like almost three weeks or something like that. And I got achievements for that and that kept me going, you know, I was like every day I was like, oh, I got to make sure I edit for the day because I want to keep that streak alive, you know. So I feel like that was also really nice having that little extra motivation. And now for the stuff I disliked. So first of all, you know I have to complain about Python 3 not being available for free. This is the language that most people recommend for starting out because of how common and easy it is. Not just that, it literally has been out since 2008. So it's not like you're getting something like, oh, super new and so, oh, we have to pay for it. it just doesn't really make any sense to me. Also on the topic of stuff being offered for free, I really wished that they had some more projects available for you for free because they do have a lot of them for the pro version. Each lesson you do has a project for it. Sometimes they have like two or three and a quiz, but all of that is only available for the pro version. You only really get like the first project. And then after that, all of the other projects are only reserved for the pro version. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a beginner friendly site. But so far, it kind of does seem like it's only beginner friendly, if you get what I'm saying here. Don't get me wrong, the stuff in the course is really, really good. I just wish that they kept that way of teaching the basics and carried it on over to the more advanced stuff because it felt like it was teaching you the very bare minimum. The Python for Programmers course, which is the intermediate one, the one you do after the beginners course, it didn't have any exercises at all, only reading. And that was like the whole thing going for the site. That was my list of pros. 
grows. The fact that it included exercises to apply the knowledge that you were getting to your code as you were learning. That way it sticks instead of just reading it. It was literally just some slides with information on them and that's it. No course really. Hopefully the pro version is more complete, you know, with all the projects and stuff. But after completed the courses, I still felt like I was lacking a lot. And I also kind of want to point out that from my experience at least, the JavaScript course just felt a little bit better than the Python one. Better explanations and like charts with images or GIFs with stuff that would teach you or show you how certain stuff works. Whereas the Python one was once again, the bare minimum. Hey, so I'm editing the video now and I noticed that I forgot to mention a couple of errors that I noticed while using the site. They weren't really anything major. Maybe if the connection wasn't strong enough and it would disconnect for a little second. Whenever I tried to turn in the exercises, I would get an error even though I did have the correct answer. But really all I had to do to fix it was refresh it. And also sometimes whenever you turn them in, maybe the site was looking for something a little bit too specific. Both of those things are super easily fixable. The first one, you just refresh. The second one, all you have to do is check the solution. And if it has like an extra space, you correct it. If anything, I would say they did a pretty good job at accepting different answers. As long as you got the correct results, the code didn't really matter too much. It was only in like very rare occasions where this error would happen. It was really not that noticeable. All in all, I'd say it's definitely a nice way to dip your feet in the water and kind of test things out. Maybe get that initial push to get started with coding. Like I said, that's kind of like the hard thing to do when you're first starting out. But after that, you definitely want to rely on something else. I'm also currently working on a Codecademy Pro review. So make sure you do drop a sub if you're interested in that, as well as my journey to becoming a self-taught full stack dev. Check out my other social media in the description. I have a Twitter, Instagram, Discord, TikTok, and even a Twitch. Play some video games once or twice a week. So if you're into that, check it out. It's in the description. And that's it for today, guys. Peace.